Hello and welcome to that man. That is me merchandise and today it's that time of the month again. Yes, when I talk about the stuff I've been reading. Now, it's been an interesting month. Much like a lot of you, I've had a little bit more time to read things. Now, unlike a few other people, I don't have the whole not working from home. I am still a key worker, I'm still working. But that doesn't mean I've not had time to read stuff. With everything shutting down, I've had time to read stuff and play games. So, let's look at the manga and light novels that I've been reading this month. First up is Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs. I've been reading volume 6 and volume 7 of this and my god this is a weird series. It starts off being all about the ecchi and as it goes on it's still all about the ecchi. Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs is a weird one for me. It's it's strange, it's it's all about the ecchi, which I'm all about, but it's also got a lot of plot. And I don't mean plot, I mean actual narrative. Especially in these few volumes, we kind of have a similar case to volume two where, well, one of the characters is kidnapped and forced into a win, which seems to be a, a thing that's say, reoccurring in this and they all have to save them. And there's some nice action scenes in this. In fact, there's some really nice action scenes to the point I was quite surprised about how good a title, Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs, can be when it actually tries to do the action. It's almost as if someone had jumped and turned around and went, hey, you need more action in this porn. But there's also some nice, unique ways of doing etchy, including a saucy board game. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But yeah, it's quite it's quite unique in that it does a lot of things that it doesn't other series don't tend to do. What I did like as well is that there's a big confession between the girls quite early on. I think in volume six or seven, I think it might have been volume six, and that they're all kind of just like, well, yeah, I like him, you like him, I like him too, and they're just kind of like, yeah, you're all my rivals, but let's be friends about it. Because that's how harem series go, they're not trying to kill each other or sabotage each other. And I thought that was quite a nice twist on things early on in the series rather than usual when, you know, it kind of goes on forever and ever and ever and then at the end they go, oh by the way I like you, and he's just like, I like you too. But yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one that uh, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it as I read it. Next up I read Cells at Work, Code Black. Volume 2 and Volume 3. Sounds like Code Black has just got an anime announcement. That's right, it has just been given an anime announcement. So yeah, brilliant. Everyone else can enjoy that. Uh, January 2021. Um, bit of a dark thing to be uh, reading at this time of, uh, time of the year. And this is such a dark series because this is a body that is not taking care of itself. Wherever cells at work, the original one was just like, oh yeah, everyone's good, everyone's gonna be fine. This is kind of just like, yeah, you're not taking care of yourself, you're smoking, you you're drinking a lot, you're sexually active. Yeah, this is a this is the cells reacting to that kind of thing. And yeah, it's dark. There's a lot of a, there's a lot of a grim moments in this. I'm not gonna depress people too much, but I, I'm going to stand by it. I actually enjoy this more than the original Cells at Work, and I do like the original Cells at Work. Um, it's a nice pick-me-up for maybe what's going on at the moment to see that uh, there is a lot of people in your body who are uh, trying their very best to make things better for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, simple as that. I also read The Empty Box and Xeroth Maria, Volume 1. This is a weird title. This is one that I was reading for a certain project and yeah, um, it took me a while to get through it. It took me a while to get into it, but you know what? I was really rewarded. And once I finished it, I completely forgot I'd even read it. Not to say it's bad or anything like that. It's actually a fantastic title. It's just very complex and if you don't have your right same frame of mind, I would say, you're not going to really enjoy it. But it is one that I really enjoyed despite that. Um, a young man 
discovers that a new transfer student is letting up more on than she's uh, letting on and turns out that uh, she's basically in Groundhog Day. Um, dies to reset the day every single day and they're trying to find a way out of it. Uh, that's as best as I can kind of give because it's hugely massively spoilers but I will cover it at a later date in a little bit more in depth because it is one that I would recommend people do check out. It's a light novel, of course, because yeah, it's light novel stuff, but it's one that I would really recommend people check out at some point. Another light novel I've been reading is The Hero is Overpowered but Overly Cautious Volume 2, and man, that twist at the end. Yeah, The Hero That is Overpowered but Overly Cautious is still a gag series. Um, there was an anime a few months ago, I haven't watched it, I read volume 1 with the intention of reviewing it before I got the chance to watch it and I just didn't. Simple as that. But that doesn't mean that it's not worth talking about. Volume 2 continues the series Overpowered Crusade to defeat the Demon Lord with a useless goddess in tow, that's right, and two, well, bag carriers who are also overpowered, he goes about saving the world. And there's a lot of nice twists and turns with this. There's a lot of new characters that are incredibly fun. Um, I felt that it took us a while to get through this, but then when I look back, I was kind of like, no, actually it didn't. It, I actually got through this rather quickly. It's still fun. It's still stupid. Um, the main character, he, he's pretty horrible, but we kind of have an idea of why he is the way it is during this one and yeah there's going to be some sacrifices to make sacrifices indeed yeah it's again it's not grim it's just kind of one of those ones where i'm just kind of like yeah it's uh it's interesting so for an upcoming video i've been trying to read more sports manga and kadansha really nicely hooked me up by letting me buy so many of their titles for like 69p or was it 99p so one of them I picked up was Ace of the Diamond, a title that I've been trying to read for quite some time. Ace of the Diamond is, well, it's a baseball manga, a sport that I have absolutely no concept of. All I know is that it's round, it's only more American. Yeah, we don't really have baseball over in the UK, so it was quite interesting to read it and it didn't really focus on baseball. That was one of the weird things about it. One of the things I always try and see for a sports manga, one of the things that appeals to me is that it doesn't focus too much on the sport. It focuses on the characters. However, this one I was kind of just like, um, yeah, <laughs> that was about it. Um, a young man is uh, with a sports team and he just wants to keep his friends together and the gang together. And he's recruited by a better sports team and he's kind of got the whole, oh, will he, will he go, will he not? And that's about it. Volume 1 was very slow going. In fact, I was quite bored with Volume 1. It took a very long time for me to get through it. I'm not going to give up with it, however. I, I believe it actually is on sale at the moment, so I'm kind of like, yeah, I can buy some more. Um, but yeah, it's not one of those ones I'm going to go around and go, yeah, I definitely recommend it. But a lot of people do recommend it, so maybe it gets good later on. I don't know. I also read Again, and oh my god, this is absolutely fantastic. Again tells the story of a young man who has long hair. He's kind of at the end of his school tenure. And he's just like, oh, well, I've, I've kind of wasted it because, of course, that's what they all do. He didn't really make many friends. He didn't really stand out much. He looks a bit like a delinquent. However, by chance, he manages to go back in time. That's right, we've got a sports series that goes back in time. And he meets the head honcho of the Oendan Club. Oendan! Yeah. That game. Oendan is basically male cheerleading squad or cheerleading squad with heart and power. And yeah, I was really hooked on with this one because the main character, 
he looks a bit like a delinquent, he's got short hair, he's bl bl blonde hair because as we all know in Japan if you've got blonde hair you're a delinquent. And I really liked the way that this one was done, it was so interesting, I was really hooked on it. It didn't feel like a sports manga but it also felt like a sports manga. Again was really, I really loved the artwork, I really loved the character design, I mean you know, I mean one of the, the main characters is the female head of the Oendan Club and she looks adorable but the whole pr concept of it is that she's kind of like wants to be tough and everyone's kind of portrayed her as being you know she's only joined the club to get with the guys because yeah that's how it works in there and there's an evil scheme and cheerleader so yeah if you want if you want cheerleaders versus cheerleaders with very little etchy or fan service um, this is the one that you want to be reading I would highly recommend it the next title I want to talk about is The Wandering Witch, The Journey of Elena. Wandering Witch is a unique title because, let's face it, I wouldn't have picked it up if it wasn't for the fact that Kino's Journey is still not released. Yeah, people need to stop holding on to that one. That one needs to be released out in the wild. It's still a great title though and really fills that void quite well. A young witch flies from country to country, meeting people as she goes. She only stays for a few years and then travels onwards. These are the stories and there's a lot of stories, there's about 15 little stories in here. All about Elena, a young girl who, well, she's a traveller, she's a witch, she's got all these magical powers. And she'll just go to these countries and she'll meet the people and all of the countries will be unique. For example, the pe the country of beautiful people. Who, well, there's two stories to that. The country of uh, where the, the, these, these flowers that uh, possess people. And plenty of other stories. And some of the stories are dark, some of them are cheerful, but they're all good. And it's not often I come across a title that's so not spoken about, but I really enjoyed. Definitely worth recommending this one. Definitely worth checking it out. Another title that I've been reading, and I've been reading a lot of, Toradora. In fact, I've read so much of Toradora that I'm finally caught up. I enjoy Toradora is because it feels so much different to most light novels. Most light novels have a fantasy world or they're an isekai but this one is just school life and you know what I don't normally like school life when it comes to anime and manga but Toradora is something special. I don't know it's it, it just feels something special and it's a title I'm so excited to be able to watch on Blu-ray when it's re-released next month. Except I won't watch it because I want to read the whole thing. I've only got one volume and I'm so excited for it. It's a nice easy going title that is perfect during isolation or if you just want to have something different to read. It's one I would really recommend and I don't see enough people talking about it. But everyone I know who has read it, they absolutely adore it. They adore Toradora. And that's it for me. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Goodbye.